reproductive interactions that seem to lead to like courtship displays of name or aggressive interactions, like fighting over access to mates or territory, we typically think of these as happening between members of the same species. But these types of interactions can also happen between members of two different species. And we're increasingly recognizing that these types of interspecific interactions are quite common and can also have really large scale ecological and evolutionary consequences. These types of interspecific interactions might be most common after a secondary contact event, so here I'm showing this cartoon depicting an ancestral population that is split into two due to some sort of geographic isolating barrier, and eventually these allopatric populations might come back together in secondary contact with symmetry. And we're really interested in what happens at secondary contact because it offers a unique opportunity to study the process of segregation, and there are also multiple different outcomes that can occur after secondary contact. We can get local extinction of one lineage or the other. We can get collapse into a hybrid swarm. Or we can get character displacement acting to finalize the speciation process and allowing for coexistence of these two new species. So character displacement describes straight evolution in symmetry that results from selection to avoid possibly interspecific interaction. Here I'm showing a hypothetical range map for species one and species two, and they have this area of symmetry. And on the right, I'm showing for a hypothetical trait how character displacement would look. So in allopatry, these species have overlapping trait values. And in symmetry, these traits have been displaced, shifted away from one another. And this acts to reduce the frequency of costly interspecific interactions. OK, today I'm going to talk about two different types of character displacement. The first is reproductive character displacement. So this describes selection to avoid maladaptive interspecific reproductive interactions. And it can lead to divergence in mating traits and symmetry. Similarly, agonistic character displacement describes selection to avoid maladaptive interspecific aggressive interactions, and it can lead to a divergence in competitive traits and symmetry. And agonistic character displacement has only been recognized as a really distinct evolutionary phenomenon with distinct evolutionary outcomes from reproductive character displacement within the last decade or so. So we're still trying to figure out the dynamics of these two different types of processes. I use starters as a study system to um, examine reproductive diagnostic character displacement. So garters are a highly diverse group of North American stream fishes. There are over 250 described species of garters occurring throughout the eastern half of the United States. And for a long time, over the last century, people have really thought that female matrix and sexual selection was driving diversification in this group because males have these species-specific nuptial color patterns or other types of nuptial ornamentations. Um, but I thought that character displacement might also play a role in driving diversification in this group because they can form these diverse communities of up to 12 different Patrick garter species, and interspecific interactions are also really common, so they hybridize pretty frequently. So today I'm going to talk about the importance of character displacement in this system, and also the surprising role that male behavioral biases like mate choice and aggressive biases play in driving segregation. I study two wide ranging groups of garters, the orange star garters and rainbow garters, which hopefully you guys can see their ranges okay. Um, so another interesting thing about this group, um, other than that they have similar color patterns, similar ecology, and similar mating behavior, and that they hybridize, is that the orange star garters were recently split into what's now considered 15 allopatrically distributed species. So all of these smaller ranges in red, orange, and yellow are now these new 15 species of orange star garters. And 13 of them co-occur in symmetry with the more distantly related rainbow garter. So I wanted to ask whether reproductive and agonistic character displacement might play a role in promoting speciation between orange throat and rainbow garters, and also whether these processes might subsequently um, play a role in allopatric diversification within the orange throat site. So to start off with here, we're just going to focus on one of these orange throat splits and the rainbow garter. <laughs> And going into this, I knew that in at least one Sinpatrick population in one Sinpatrick river drainage, that it appeared that males preferred to mate with conspecific females and bias aggression towards conspecific males, um, and that females showed no preference for orange throat versus rainbow garter males. And so I wanted to expand this analysis to compare Sinpatrick and allopatric populations to ask for their male preferences for conspecific or heightened symmetry versus allopatry, which is the critical test for character displacement. Okay, so I went out and caught a bunch of fish, and I performed all these behavioral assays for reproductive and agonistic character displacement. But before I get into the details of those, I'm going to show you what garter mating behavior looks like. And I might be seeing a weird and weird little Okay. Oh, you know, I'm just hanging it up. Okay. So here's a male and a female orange throat garter. And the female will hop along the bottom of the stream and look for a good spot to lay her eggs, and that 
male display resistance of this other male trying to protect access to the female. So that was ten flares and then a tap and a shake. And once the female finds the spot she likes, she will bury herself pretty much completely into the gravel and wait for a male to spot her. And they just release eggs and sperm and then they move on. And sometimes the males get so preoccupied with fighting that they forget about the female and she'll get up to find another spot and wait for another male to come and her. Okay. So to measure brain factor character displacement, I measured the male mating preferences with Kirkpatrick and male attachment populations. And I compared a focal male's preference for a conspecific versus heteroconspecific female. And again, brain factor character displacement predicts increased male preference for conspecific mates and symmetry. To test for agonistic character displacement, I measured male aggressive behavior, so fin flares and attacks, like what you just saw in that video between those males. And a focal male was observed interacting with a conspecific rival male and a heterospecific rival male in random order. And agonistic character displacement predicts increased male aggressive biases towards conspecifics versus heteroconspecifics in symmetry relative to allopetry. So here's the results. On the y axis here, this is for allopathic trials, so where orange coat brain motorists don't naturally co occur. On the y axis, I have the focal male orange coat orders proportion of time spent between the female was either conspecific or heterospecific. You can see that those don't differ. But in symmetry, we have this really dramatic increase in male preference for conspecifics. We pretty much ignore females of the other species. And so there's really strong male driven female isolation in symmetry, increasing character displacement. We see similar patterns when we look at the agonistic character displacement results. So here, this time on the y axis, I have the focal male orange coat darters portion of fin flares performed towards a conspecific or higher specific rival male. Those don't differ significantly in allopatry, but in symmetry where these fish co-occur, um, there is increased male bias for these aggressive behaviors towards conspecifics. Okay, so I wanted to expand this analysis to include a total of four symmetric and two allopatric population variants of orange coat marine motor orders to see if this pattern is widespread throughout the ranges of these species. Here's what I found. So on the x-axis, I have my six different orange throat rainbow darter population or species pairings. Um, and here the white bars are sympatric and the black bars are allopatric. And on the, the y-axis, I have no mate preference. So increasing towards one is preference for conspecifics, and down negative one would be mate preference for heterospecifics. And we can see across the board there's a really um, consistent increased preference for conspecifics in symmetry that is not present in allopatric. And we saw a very similar pattern for agonistic character displacement as well. So again, males are really good at recognizing their own species of um, either red males or females to mate with in symmetry, but not in allopatry. Okay, so next I wanted to ask whether these patterns of reproductive and agonistic character displacement might have something to do with the deviation in allopatry within the orange coat group. So I previously showed you this really simple image of how character displacement might act between two but sometimes in nature, things are more complicated. And so this is sort of similar to what we have with the orange throat gray footer system, where we have one really wide range of species, and then we have a second species, a close relative that it experiences character displacement with, where there's more of a passion distribution and maybe lower gene flow among populations. And in cases like this, where character displacement is happening in symmetry, we might have character displacement proceed in one direction in one sympatric population, and in another direction in a second sympatric population, just due to random stochasticity. And um, eventually this might lead to behavioral isolation or divergence among populations within species. And we term this cascade character displacement. And this has been documented in a variety of different organisms. And eventually this might proceed to such an extent that it can really drive allopatric speciation and this radiation as a correlated effect of character displacement between two sympatric species. So, I wanted to see whether this might be happening between orange throat and rainbow darters. So has reproductive and agonistic character displacement between orange throat and rainbow darters subsequently caused diversification within the orange throat clade. So again, I performed these same uh, table trials for reproductive and agonistic character displacement. But this time, instead of pairing orange throat and rainbow darters together, I paired two of those recently diverged orange throat mazes together. So effectively simulating secondary contact between those species. And I paired orange throat darter species that were either sympatric with rainbow darters or both allopatric and rainbow darters. And so again, we're only focusing on orange throats right now. And so what we would expect to see if reproductive character 
displacement have a cascading effect is that the orange fruit garter recently diverged orange fruit species that co-occur with rainbow garters should have high seasonal isolation and high preferences for conspecifics, and those that don't co-occur with rainbow garters should have lower preferences for conspecifics over another recently diverged orange fruit garter. Here's what we see. On the x-axis, I have my four different pairings that I analyzed of um, four different orange fruit species, and on the y-axis, I have male mating preference. And so the white bars are pairings of orange throat species that are sympatric with rainbow garters, and the black is one pair that's allopatric from rainbow garters. And we do see consistently higher preferences. Um, the males have higher preferences for females of their own species over another closely related orange throat symmetry, but not an allopatric from rainbow garters. And we see a similar pattern with the aggressive eyes. And so um, it seems like behavioral isolation is evolving as a correlated effect of character displacement between orange throat and rainbow so just to summarize what all I've shown you here, um, reproductive character displacement is being driven by male and female preferences in symmetry between orange throat and rainbow garters. Um, and this subsequently drives cascade character reproductive character displacement within orange throat lineages. We see similar patterns when we look at male aggressive biases. So we see agonistic and cascade agonistic character displacement. And so this shows that male behavioral biases are driving mutations simultaneously in symmetry and in allopatry. And surprisingly, when we look at female mating preferences, there is no female preference for conspecific over heterospecific males, regardless of symmetry between orange throat and rainbow garters. So again, this is all being driven by male behavior. Um, and interestingly, this is the first documented case, as far as I'm aware, that agonistic character displacement can have cascade effects among closely related populations or lineages. Um, and this also really changes how we think about speciation and characters, which are the most diverse groups of vertebrates in North America, or one of the most diverse groups. And so I just want to leave you with a couple of really broad conclusions and implications here. So I've shown you that interspecific interactions can have large scale macroevolutionary consequences. Um, and this is an example of local biological community affecting species diversity, in this case where increased biodiversity begets further biodiversity. And being able to predict how these types of species interactions might play out is particularly important right now. With global climate change, we have species ranges shifting at a really rapid rate and species coming into secondary contact at a fast rate. And so being able to predict how interspecific reproductive interactions play out can have a really big conservation implication. I'd like to thank my PhD advisor, Becky Fuller, and all the Fuller lab members that helped with this work and helped collect these fish and my funding sources. And thank you all for being here. And I think I have time for a question. <laughs>